Live from Sport RX Studios. Cycling Glasses Buyer's Guide 2019. Coming up. Next. Hey everybody, this is Sunglass Rob from Sport RX, and I'm here with professional cyclist Stefan Rock to talk about how to get the right pair of cycling glasses. If you have more questions after you watch this video, you're always welcome to call us. We have opticians, a lot of them ride bikes and can help you get the right pair of glasses. Uh, we'd love for you to subscribe to the channel and why don't you just give this video a thumbs up, if not only for Stefan's mustache. All right, Stefan, you're a professional cross-country mountain biker. That's correct, yes. You also have done some road racing. Absolutely. And you ride bikes eight days a week? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Stefan's, Eight days a week, Stefan's, you know, 24-7. Yeah, he's always, right. he's always peddling something. And he's also a big connoisseur of eyeglasses. And I'm a pretty avid cyclist. Used to do a lot of road. Mm -hmm. Now a little bit more into mountain. I want to get a gravel bike, but that's another video. Okay, so let's talk about what to look for when you're getting cycling glasses. So for me, I think let's start with frames and then we'll talk yeah, lenses. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, Something obviously really important is how the frame fits and the type of coverage the lens gets for you. And something you want to be kind of uh, uh, remember, something you want to be aware of when you're getting the glasses is how they fit when you're actually in the cycling position. So for example, this is an Oakley Jawbreaker and these were designed for cycling. And something that you're often doing when you're on a road bike is you're kind of in the drops or you're in a little bit more of an aggressive position or if you're on a time trial bike, it's very easy with non-sport glasses or glasses that weren't intended to be in this position to look over the top of the glasses. Absolutely. And that's pretty annoying. Yeah, it's just cumbersome to be looking yeah. at a frame, right? Yeah, and if you're wearing a prescription and you're looking over your prescription, that's also dangerous. <laughs> so you want to have a frame that's going to give you good coverage from up top. You also definitely want good coverage from below and the sides for wind, for debris, for protection. So coverage is kind of an important thing. And then fit coverage is kind of similar, but you don't want something so tight that it, it's going to hurt your head on a long century kind of a day. Yeah. And you don't want something so loose that if you do this, they're falling off. So a nice kind of comfortable uh, fit, something that's, you know, snug, but not so snug that it's going to hurt. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's kind of similar with um, shoes. I would say it's kind of, you know, depending on the application and, and the position that you're in when you're riding, you know, road versus mountain, you may be looking for a different frame as far as the wrap, um, things like that, and style, obviously, yeah. that's always very important. But yeah. Gotta look good. Gotta look good. Yeah, well, we make that easy here. <laughs> All right. The next thing you want to consider is how much grip is on the frame. So for me, a true road cycling frame is going to have a lot of grip in the right places because you're probably going to be sweating. Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, I guess if you're doing it right, you're sweating. <laughs> Unless, um, yeah. So you want a nose pad that's going to have a lot of like this rubberized grip material and also on the temple. Ideally both, if not at least one, but ideally both, you're going to have a lot of grip. And kind of all our best sellers here, this is really popular with high prescriptions. The Rudy Project Horus uh, has an adjustable rubber nose pad, adjustable mm -hmm. temples, all the 100% sport glasses. This is the new... Have you seen this guy, the S3? Oh, this sure one's not RXable, know. sorry for prescription wearers, but this thing is so cool, that you should put bad, those on. Yeah. yeah, those are ridiculous. So um, all the kind of grip Ooh. you need in the right place. And then I think this part's obvious, especially to roadies, but you want lightweight glasses. You don't want something so heavy that they're gonna um, be hurting you, that they're gonna be sliding off. And most glasses that are intended for sports, for cycling are gonna have all the right type of nylon frame materials to be lightweight. If you want to go really extra lightweight, you can pick up something like the Smith um, Attack Max that has this cool interchangeable magnetic thing, but is super, super lightweight and has lots and lots of coverage. So I think that might be everything on frame. Anything you think I forgot, Stefan? Um, no, I think you pretty much hit every single point there, Rob. All right, yeah. so lenses is really where I have a lot of opinions and, and a few things to say for sure. So one thing to really remember is lens material. I, I know because I, I really like and appreciate kind of this um, fashion that's going on on the bike that's kind of more casual. Mm -hmm. um, people, it's happening in mountain biking where it's not so like crazy looking, it looks more like street clothes. Racy. Yeah. yeah, and even road kits now are kind of a little bit, getting a little bit more simple and totally. a little less racy looking. And helmets are kind of not as 
aerodynamic. So, and the people are trying to wear like their everyday cool sunglasses on the bike, which I understand and it's cool and I get, but don't wear your glass lenses. A lot of really nice uh, sunglasses like Persoles, like Ray-Bans, like Costas, like Maui's, they have some versions that come with glass lenses. Man, if you take a spill and you're wearing glass lenses or a rock pops up and you're wearing glass lenses, it is it could shatter the lens it's not a good thing so no glass lenses on the bike you'll also know that they're heavy right so yeah i've, I've been seeing a lot of people wearing glass lenses on the bike and i just want to be like what are you doing <laughs> okay so for sure if you do anything don't buy glass lenses for the bike the next thing i want to talk about is the color of the lens and the family of lenses and this phrase that i've come up with which is less stop more pop so what you want is to have more of a contrast lens. Sure. So like, you know, you riding and you have like, it's an overcast day and the ground is gray and the shadows are gray and the potholes are gray. And guess what? If you're wearing a gray lens, everything's gray. Mm -hmm. Real cycling glasses, in my opinion, have more of a rose base, a brown base. I know sure. you have a lot of opinions on uh, this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, d I definitely have, my favorite all-time lens right now is the Prism Trail from Oakley. Yeah. Um, they just came out with a new torch, yeah. right? Um, which I have yet to, I have tried a couple times, but I think I really want to buy that as my yeah. next lens. But the big thing with that is it works in so many different, uh, you know, kind of trail settings, even for the road, I like it a lot. For overcast um, days. For overcast road, yeah. days, especially early Which we mornings. get a lot in San Diego, believe it or not. Uh, absolutely, yeah. yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Even through the summer, unfortunately. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah, in and out of trees, you know, I was just in Oregon and like that trail lens just, just works perfect, right? Yeah. The Prism Trail, so. So on the, on the that. road bike, you really want to get a contrasting lens because the background is gray, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, most of the time. Um, you're riding on asphalt or cement and it's gray, so you want a different color. So ambers, roses, bronzes, kind of um, any kind of real cycling lens is gonna have kind of that kind of feel where it's giving you contrast. Now, a lot of these companies these days are coming out with these new highly technical lenses that are improving contrast like you've never seen before. If you haven't tried like Chroma Pop from Smith mm -hmm. or Prism from Oakley or the 100% uh, uh, lens, I'm gonna uh, baffle up the name, the Hyper Lens from 100% yet, um, it's gonna give you so much more contrast. It's pretty amazing, I'd really recommend that. So that was kind of like the more pop, less stop, the color, the contrast, that kind of whole series. Another question is, and we're talking road bikes here, mm -hmm. polarized lenses or not. Mountain biking, polarized lenses, Hard no. No way. Road biking, I would say it's personal. I think if you're looking at all the brands out there that are doing so much research, uh, investing so much in technology, and any of them that have what's a true road biking lens, they're not polarized. Sure. So what polarized lenses do is they filter out reflective glare. So when the sunlight comes down from the sun, it comes in a vertical wavelength, and when it bounces off chrome, road, snow, you get those glare balls. That's the horizontal and vertical wavelengths vibrating together. That's what a glare is. Polarized lenses cut out the horizontal wavelength to cut out the glare. So by doing that, it can affect on some people depth perception, which is for mountain biking, depth perception is so Huge. key, you can't risk it. Road biking, usually the road's not like jagged, right? Like you yeah. can tell if it's going uphill or downhill, polarized or not. Um, the benefits of the polarization is the glare reduction. The downfall could be the depth perception issue. I think it's personal. I do think a lot of people have this old school mentality that polarized lenses are gonna affect your digital readout like on your Garmin. Yeah. Not anymore. Uh, the Garmin's and polarized lenses, every single one I've tested in the last 10 years works well together. Now, if your Garmin is 180, is turned, the polarized will block the lens. But if your handlebar is this way and you're trying to see how fast you're going, you got other problems. <laughs> you're so, going over the bars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whoops. So not not an issue anymore. But what's your take on polarized lenses? I mean, biking? I think, you know, if it's a bright day yeah. I, and on asphalt, I would say go with a polarized yeah, lens. You yeah. know, I think it actually will help me see little chunks or like gravel on yeah. the asphalt a little it's bit. It's a little bit more relaxing um, if it's a long day too. Absolutely, yeah. Um, your eyes don't get as tired. Um, yeah. Maybe on overcast days, that's kind of debatable. Yeah, yeah. That's when I would still still stick with a kind of a higher contrast. I think if you're not sure, you can err on the side of not getting it. Yeah. So um, the other lens technology to talk about is transition or uh, photochromic lenses, mm -hmm, lenses mm -hmm. that get lighter and that. darker. So 
A in prescription, really, really popular option people get for cycling glasses is a, a, a transition lens because it's so versatile. You can sure. wear it night if you are commuting. You can wear it mountain biking in the shadows. You can wear it daytime on a bright road ride. If you're going to do a century and you, the weather's going to change or you're going 100 miles in one direction, um, it, you don't know what the weather is going to be like. So it's really nice because it'll work everywhere. If you want to go inside and grab a cup of coffee, you can see what you're doing. So in prescription, it's really popular. In non-prescription, a lot of the brands are getting behind the bandwagon that you can find photochromatic lenses. Smith's coming out with more of them. Oakley's got some, Tafosi's got some. So there are more and more photochromatic op options out there. So just up to you, consider what you- Now is that, is that, this may be kind of a dumb question, Rob, but since you're the expert, are there, different, the uh, are, are there different uh, lens colors that are all available in a photochromatic yeah, or a transition? Usually they're yeah. going to go from clear to gray. Sometimes they're going to go from clear to brown. Okay. I know a minute okay. ago I said never get gray lenses. Yeah. When they're photochromatic, the gray is less of an issue because they lighten so much that um, it's not like a dark gray. So it's still not going to give you as much contrast as you want, but sure. it's not nearly as much of a problem if you're wearing like a really dark polarized mirrored Okay. Um, lens and then it's overcast and you can't see where you're going. But um, there are more brown options coming available. I think everybody's awesome. starting to listen to me about contrast. So <laughs> yeah, uh, more more available. So if you're still watching and you still have prescription questions, um, one other kind of thing people ask about is should I get my progressive lenses on my cycling glasses, on my road cycling glasses? My answer to that, like most good answers, is it depends. Um, really, if you've been wearing progressive lenses for a long time, you're really used to it, you really like it, it doesn't bother you at all, it's probably a good idea to get it on your biking glasses so you can reach your Garmin, you can fix a flat, you don't uh, over tip the barista when you're getting it. <laughs> I had somebody finally get progressives because they gave a $100 bill to a valet guy. Wow, lucky yeah, valet. So they, they was giving him a $10 tip, which was good, but then he got home and he's like, <laughs> Just I have him. one extra 10 and one less zero hundred. There, yeah. yeah, so um, it's, it's much easier to, to see. And I think for repairs too, it's really nice. So. Um, if you're not sure if you should get the progressives or not, or have like more technical questions about the RX stuff, like I said, you can call us. We have opticians here. You can email us, info at sportrx.com, or you can leave a comment down in the comment section on any question you might have about cycling glasses or Stefan's mustache. Later. <laughs>